Hi guys, it's Esther. Um, I'm going to be doing my poetry book presentation on this little video here and then posting it so you guys can watch it. Hope you guys are all doing well. Hope you guys are enjoying this beautiful sun and weather. Um, but the book I chose to do is called All Along You Were Blooming, Thoughts for Boundless Living. Um, it's written by a lady named Morgan Harper Nichols. Morgan Harper Nichols was um, originally a Christian music songwriter, musician. Um, she started making music when she was about 15 years old. Uh, she was raised in a very religious household, which is interesting because I do feel like a lot of her work kind of portrays that upbringing and background that she had. Um, I think this book is really, really cool for the way that it's derived. So um, a ton of these these poems actually came from stories that were being sent out to Morgan. And so she would request stories from people who were in, happy or sad, but dealing with anxiety, depression, fear, um, anything really. And over social media, she would get these direct messages, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, um, and she would create poems in return to encourage these people and use their stories for inspiration in order to create something um, worth reading to them. So I think that's super, super cool. Um, <clears throat> the publisher of this book is Zundervan, which I did a little research on in their Bible publishing company. So it doesn't surprise me very much because um, a lot of her poetry is kind of in that realm. Um, a lot of this is posted on her Instagram. And so that's how I actually found her was through Instagram. Um, her her work and her poetry is on her Instagram page and she posts different poems every day and, and I recognize some of the poems in here from her Instagram page so that's kind of cool too um <clears throat> but like I said these derived from stories that she was receiving from people which I think is just such an awesome way to connect with people um the title I will say is very relevant all along you were blooming um I think the overarching theme of her of her book kind of creates this feeling of resting and living in this abounding grace that we are so called given um freely given at that and I think that you know once you have that in your brain then to then you kind of start to feel like okay life is a process and I'm not always going to be in full bloom. So I think it's a great, great title. Um, there are some acknowledgements in here. There's definitely a lot of blurbs in here that um, speak really awesome words about Har Morgan Harper Nichols. Um, her acknowledgement is to my family, teachers, and friends around the world whose lives have enriched my own in countless ways. The pages of this book are inspired by the stories you have so generously shared with me. Thank you. And then also she has an introduction that she wrote in here. Um, and I think the introduction was just so moving to me. It, it spoke volumes as um, I've been in such a similar place that she um, talks about being in. Um, and and the, the main question here in here italicized is, do I have anything worth sharing? And I think that as writers, we can sometimes also put ourselves in, and bury ourselves in, in kind of a hole that feels like we're not good enough or the work that we have is isn't worthy of sharing to other people and so you know just to know that she kind of derived and felt um what I feel so often and, and she felt that at one point in time and now she have has all these wonderful books published um it's just really inspiring to me so um prepare to be inspired because this girl is very inspiring all right, so the book is separated into four different sections for the heart, for the mind, for the body, and for the soul. Um, every poem has a piece of artwork on it. So there is not one, actually there are a few pages that are blank, but I think that that kind of has a meaning to it too. Um, but every, every single poem has an illustration, which I think is one of the coolest parts about it, um, just because it, it either, you know, contrasts or complements anything about the poem. So um, I'm going to show you guys this poem and then I'm going to read it. So this is the artwork behind it. And here we go. Never let anyone who cannot bear your pain make you feel you are unbearable. Not everyone is capable of walking with you, but that does not mean you are not worthy of belonging. I promise you there will be other people. There will be other people who are willing to take the time for you and not because they pity you but because they believe in the kind of love that is true. The kind of love that is not envious, the kind of love that is not proud. I know you have been let down, but please don't give up on true love now. 
It is kind and it is real, no matter how you have been made to feel. Don't give up on love. Love has not given up on you. So I really love this poem. Um, again, this is in the for the heart section. Um, the structure of this, I think pretty much all of her poems are prose poetry. Um, they're not always, they don't always look like it, but either prose poetry or spoken word just because um, they flow just how a prose and spoken word should flow. Um, there's a little rhyming in there. There's only two stanzas on this, but I think I see this so often in her poems after reading the whole collection is that when she separates her stanzas, she separates, um, she wants to distinguish between emotions, between feelings. And so this first stanza I feel like is it, talking about, you know, you're not everyone can take your pain and, and you might have pain, you might have that baggage. And then the next stanza she brings in, there will be other people, there will be a new love and you will feel it and you will feel refreshed from it. Um, so I think she really likes to distinguish between like, here's where you might be, here's where you should be, what you should be feeling in the midst of this um, hard place. So um, I think, you know, really trying to decipher between the two emotions flows with that rhyming. Um, in the second stanza, she repeats the kind of love often. And, and, you know, I think that when she repeats things in her poems, she wants you to know how important they are. So repeating true, capitalizing true love, repeating the kind of love over and over, just emphasizing um, <clears throat> that importance of the kind of love that is true, the kind of love that is not envious. Um, she evokes tons of encouraging emotions and you'll see in the next few poems that I read for you guys, but um, <clears throat> I feel like love is such a broad subject, but the way she uses her words in this poem, it kind of just boils and simmers down to what you feel for love. Um, and so, yeah, you can take this broad subject, this global subject that everyone knows about, and then just pin it pin it to you and how you feel about love and how you may have encountered love before might not always be what love looks like. So um, I think this poem is, you know, a lot about accepting yourself and making sure that um, you are okay with you no matter who you have around you and that love is not always going to be your definition of it. So um, I love this one. All right, so we're going to go to the next section. Um, if you haven't noticed by now, I'm going to read from each section. So this one, this section falls under for the, sorry, for the mind. Um, and this is what it looks like. just want you guys to see there's dark and there's a little star. Okay, so when it's 2 a.m., and the room is lined with shadows. Turn your eyes toward the window, to the little light burn of the street lamp, the white star, the flickering red of the airplane passing by. Breathe deep, breathe deep. It is okay to feel a little out of place in this dark and restless space and come falling, falling into grace. And know this is still true. Lo, I am with you until the end of the earth, even at restless 2 a.m.s, even when it hurts. So turn on the music, open the book. You do not have to count the hours. You may have lost your share of sleep, but light will never lose the glory. And no matter how long these late nights last, the sun is on the way with mercy in the morning. So I love this one. First of all, you know, completely black. Um, the page is completely back, black, giving that art, um, the words, the light, right? And I just think, I, I think the image that it brings is sometimes, you know, I feel like she's using this as a metaphor for life, that sometimes you're going to be in a dark spot in life. Um, and she's using this, this aspect of light to bring out your weaknesses and to shun out your fears in order to create happiness within yourself. Um, and this one, she uses a ton of enjambment. Um, and I think that <clears throat> with her enjambment, her words become more important. She wants you to see specific words when she enjams the line. And so the first one, when it's 2 a.m., 
line break, and the room line break is lined line break with shadows. It's it's almost like it forces you to feel it a little bit more, which I love, love, love about that. Just distinguishing between what perception of emotion that you will see. Um, the imagery in this is wonderful. You know, <clears throat> no matter who you are, no matter what your 2 a.m. looks like, you know what it feels like. And so in order for her to bring that out of people, she, you know, uses uses this perfect details about what 2 a.m. feels like, what 2 a.m. looks like, um, and what it even sounds like in order to put you in that place where you're like, mm, that's a late night thought for me. So um, <clears throat> just kind of making that a little bit more global for everyone to feel like everyone has had one of those late nights. And as long as those late nights last, whether those late nights are your whole life or not, there will always be some sort of light at the end of the tunnel. So um, another thing I really like about this is that she implemented a psalm in here. So um, it's one of the Psalms from the Bible. Um, and it's a new, it's a newly like translated version. So it's kind of weird that, you know, it almost goes perfectly hand in hand with her poem. Um, but I love that she implemented in there um, <clears throat> just so, so naturally. So um, I think the best thing about this, you know, in the line, it says in this dark and restless space. And I feel like as soon as I read that, I knew this is not just about 2 a.m. This is about life and sometimes life feels dark and you're always going to have to make sure that you're looking for that end of the tunnel because it doesn't matter how late, how long the late nights last, the, the sun will always rise. And so if you're looking at your life in that perspective, you always have to have some sort of light at the end. So super encouraging once again. All right, so we're going to move on to... For the body, I believe. Let me double check that. Yes, for the body. <clears throat> All right, and this is what it looks like. All right. There will be times when the last thing you want to do is hear that you have to keep going. The last thing you will want to do is feel you have to keep pushing. Let the breaths leaving your body second by second remind you how seconds soon turn into minutes and these minutes soon turn into hours and hours then turn into days. And even though you once thought you were stagnant, you have made it a miraculously long way through the darkness. So I love this one. Um, first, specifically for the art um, and how it complements the poem. So. If you look at it, this part of the poem, she's talking about how you don't want to keep going, how you don't want to push forward, how you don't want to keep going. And this part of the poem is talking about making it a long, long way through lots of times, lots of days, lots of seconds, lots of hours. Um, and I, I love what she did with this. I just feel like most of the sadness is here. And then when time passes by, you've gotten to this golden kind of color looking um stanza where it kind of just puts you in that place where like i said before she really wants to decipher emotions between stanzas so um i think that was really really cool that she used some color in there um this poem definitely evokes a feeling of exhaustion and i just think that it's really relevant in where we're at right now with um the coronavirus going on i just think that um <clears throat> It spoke so loud to me when I read there will be times when the last thing you want to hear is that you have to keep going. Um, you know, I, I think that mentally or not, we're all exhausted and in school or not, keeping on is going to be hard during this time just because isolation is, is not easy whatsoever really for anyone. So um, I just think in, towards the beginning she's evoking this emotion where you're like I am exhausted I am tired but then towards the end she gets finally to you can rest assured because you've made it and you will always make it no matter where you go you will have made it and I, I just think that's super super encouraging to hear something like that where at a time I'm constantly feeling like I've hit the end and there was no light there so um 
what I also love about this is her second let breaths leaving your body second by second remind you how seconds soon turn into minutes and these minutes soon turn into hours and hours then turn into days and and she's creating this concept of time that that is visual that you can see that that derives specifically from breathing and so she's using this breathing metaphor as a mechanism to overcome the weaknesses in life right take a breath let the breath remind you of time and how time can go by so fast and then by the time you know it you're there and you're happy again and I think that that's just such a, a cool concept to be able to look at time to be able to put time down on a piece of paper and say this is what time is and this is how it's going to benefit you at the end of the day, deriving from one breath that you're going to take, which you're going to take a lot of breaths in your days. So I think that's super, super cool. Um, I think it's super powerful at the end. You are stagnant. You have made it. Though you once thought you were stagnant, you have made it. Um, stagnant being so powerful, but really only just the thought that you have of yourself inside your brain. So yeah, I loved this one. And we'll move on to our last one for the soul. Um, <clears throat> this one might be my favorite. <laughs> okay. And this is what it looks like. Got our art. Oh. All right. What if all the imperfections and the flaws were only part of your story, not the sum of who you are? What if all along you were made to be beautiful and it was only the dirt from this broken world that made you doubt your shining self. And what if you were not alone, as you once thought, and when a friend told you she would be there, she truly meant it? What if for every time you were afraid, you remember how you were brave, and it only escaped your memory because bravery is natural these days? Perhaps there are a million reasons to never take the leap, to never take the time to think your presence means anything. But I hope you know there are more reasons to believe this life is worth living for. I hope you can look down into that warped well of your imperfections, knowing whatever you find there can never even compare to the greatness in your soul shining wildly through. So there's a lot in this poem, a lot to unpack. Um, and I think that's why it's my favorite because it's just so much and it's so dense and you know we, we talk about poets condensing their thoughts and I know this poem probably had the longest free write possible and there was so much inside there and then this is what we got and if this is what we got I just I want to know what else there was because um it's it's so refreshing to read something like this you know the flow is so wonderful the rhymes leaving you with a content feeling um and and whether we're talking about flaws and imperfections and being alone and being afraid or not you're still reading this so contently um you know she repeats what if a ton creating this question inside the reader's head saying well what if i wasn't enough or what if I was enough? And so it kind of almost forces you to put yourself in that mindset of, yeah, what if that happened? And what if my imperfections were not my sum? Um, and I think it, like I said, it just forces you to think about, well, how would I look at myself then if this was actually true? Um, and I think she has such intricate decisions on what words she makes you know her word choice or what word she chooses her word choice is just so powerful like um <clears throat> specific lines what if for every time you were afraid you remember how you were brave and it only escaped your memory because bravery is natural these days as if bravery is something that we look at and, and brush off our shoulders because we see it so often nowadays that doesn't discount the fact that you were brave at one point in time whether it was one point or ten points in time and no matter who was brave in this world you have to remember that you were brave at one point too and that you still are brave so um you know the way she words it it's almost like it forces you to feel like i am brave um and then another one I hope you can look down into that warped well of your imperfections. And I, I love that warped well of imperfections. It's, you know, that alliteration, but also that that pleasing distaste that nobody loves their imperfections. But it's such a warped well and, and it is something that is a part of you and will make you who you are. Um, you know, I think that it's this poem is like 
almost so similar to the rest of this collection because it's this overarching thing of blooming as a process and it's it's going to be hard and there are times where it's not going to feel easy and times where it's not going to feel like it's for you but it is and, and that's the hardest part hard times can never be more than the sum of what all the times were and I think that's the most important thing that she's trying to portray not only in this poem but in this book too is that it's a process and that all along you might not know where you're at or what the end goal is but <clears throat> every single moment counts and I think that um you know, reading this book, I've been so encouraged and especially diving into it and analyzing these poems have, has encouraged me even more. Um, but yeah, so super, super inspiring book. Um, I know that was super long and I'm really sorry, <laughs> but <clears throat> there's a lot to unpack, a lot to unfold. And it really is um, on the back. It says a celebration of hope, an encounter with grace, a restoration of the heart, a healing of wounds an anthem of freedom. Um, and I think during this, this time that we have a lot going on and, and a lot that isn't super great going on, um, I think this book is quite the, the breath of fresh air that you might need. So enjoy. Love you all. Miss you all.